one thing that, that I was going to mention, and, and Sean said it perfect, is, is small businesses in, in the community are personal. They have that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you go to any high school sporting event and see the sponsorship signs, almost every sponsor is a small business. Mm -hmm. If you go to the county fair horse show and look at the sponsors, it's small business. And yeah, your large businesses, your factories and stuff also give. But the small businesses are always there. And like Sean said, it's not, they don't do it to get something returned. They do it to give back to the community because the community gives to them. But it naturally comes back to you. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I don't focus a lot on advertising with print advertising um, because you don't need to. I mean, people in the community know that you're a small business. They know your values. They, they know your family. And they see you supporting events and advertising and being involved and that goes a long way, and that builds a sense of trust, and and that's part of it being sustainable too. And then also something Sean said was just talking about being right next to a larger plant. You know, that's the beauty of Washington County. We've got some larger facilities here, but co-mingled in that are the small businesses that all the people when they get off of the Akabono or the Toyotomi, they have to get gas from a small business owner. They have to have car insurance from a small business owner. And again, if, if I lose my job, if something happens, it's nice to know that there are some larger places that maybe I can go to seek employment. So it, everybody works together, mm -hmm. and, and that's what builds a sustainable community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something that um, struck me, you, you grew up in this community. But for Sean and I, we, we came here from Yankees. <laughs> and um, it's not every place that you can go and feel so welcomed by the local people. I mean, that is really an asset to Springfield. That people, especially because Springfield is a place, and, and Washington County is a place where the large majority of the people go way back, families go way back, and the people know everybody and they're interconnected. I keep talking that, you know, I'm going to be like Faulkner, you know, he had the whole county of his, his you know, fictional county written like on the wall of his room. I'm going to do that in the cafe. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have like the family tree of, of Washington County. I'm going to start with somebody and then we're going to like have everybody fill in because they tell me when they come in, well, that's my cousin over there and I'm that's. I'm married to her, but she's my third cousin. Oh my gosh, that's interesting. Okay, <laughs> there, okay put them up there. But um, it's going to be great. You will see it on there sometime. But they're, you know, they're okay though. They do want to know, like, well, where are you from? And I'm like, where do you come from? I'm like, do you mean this morning? Where did I come from? Or where did I come from originally? Or like, spiritually, where did I come from? But. Once they kind of get the handle on you, the people accept you and they're really, you really can feel it. You feel it that they're all right with uh, new people coming in. That is a very rare and precious, I guess as Wendell would say, precious because you don't always have that mm -hmm. in small towns and small mm -hmm. communities. Lots of times there's a very suspicious, mm -hmm. you know, thing. And I don't know, maybe it's partly because of the the Catholic communities and the sisters and the, you know, the cycling through of different people because I don't know what, why it is that way, but it's definitely a beautiful thing about this town that does make it good for mm. those who come through. I hate to elaborate on Germany, Germ Jammer, Germany, how do you pronounce? Jeremy. 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 Sorry about that. Um, you were saying how businesses buying from businesses is six dollars is or six times over. Um, my business is a little different with the flag and metal fiber works business and the sock business. I'm actually bringing in income from all over the country and actually all over the world. So what I'm actually doing is bringing in fresh dollars. And what we do, we take pride to buy as much as we can uh, within our local community. And so that dollar is coming from somewhere and so the more dollars we can get out of state or out of our county bringing them into Springfield that replenishes a lot of stuff that's exiting our county which we know a lot of our 
food that we buy and all these other belongings. Um, but considering we do so much out of state, and but we are bringing money back and we're planning on hiring more people and buying more services if it needs to fix the farm, fencing, insurances. So I think it's important that uh, even in rural communities such as this, it's, it's great to hopefully be exporting uh, services elsewhere mm. so we can contribute uh, back to the taxes and what have you into the small community. Mm -hmm. I also think that I'm um, picking up on, on what you said, Cynthia, about the you know the people being feeling welcomed. I think the healthiest and most sustainable communities are those that have a mix of the long-term rootedness and the energy that comes in from outside. That a community that's only the same people generation after generation loses something and a community where everybody's new loses something. But when you can <coughs> meld those two, you have tradition and solidness and relatedness mixed with new ideas and have you ever thought about doing it that way and I was part of this. And you know that kind of melding, I, I really believe, makes for the healthiest and most sustainable of all communities. Mm -hmm. um, there are some times when people say, well, She's not from here, yeah, you know, the, the, well, there's an awareness. But there's also, and I say this as a person who has moved in um, 52 years ago when I joined the Dominican Sisters, but I've lived in and out of Kentucky ever <laughs> since. But, um, and I just forgot my point, so we'll go right on without that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think once they see that you honor you know, that you mm -hmm. honor their history. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they have to see that, that you're not there to try to come in and, and just judge them mm -hmm. or tell them how to do it or look down your nose at them mm -hmm. or be superior in any way. I mean, I think that's really a key, mm -hmm. is if you're going to come into a small community to really honor them and be, um, you know, uh, to me, just I'm there to serve them. It doesn't matter that t to me, it doesn't matter that I'm a minister, or that I have a reverend, or you know how many degrees I have, or whatever. When I'm there, I'm cooking something for them. Then I'm there to serve them, and I'm there to listen mm. to their stories, and their stories are very important to me. Mm. And I think people have to see that you you honor the history of the place and value it, mm. Mm. and then as human beings, you're not there to tell them what to do or how to do it or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And even though I'm offering something, it might be a little different for some of them. I mean, I really do think, I mean, if somebody asks me what I think, I really think that um, I have strong opinions, like when I see the big truck come in with all the frozen food for the other restaurants there. I really think that people are making a mistake <laughs> to spend all their money on that food that's processed and has all kinds of chemicals and additives in it because that money is going, that money is going to some big corporation. Mm -hmm. Okay, some of it's going to the people that own those restaurants. Mm -hmm. They're putting a lot of chemicals in their body and they're buying something that they could just get the same thing at the next restaurant or at the five star or the whatever. I mean, everybody eats that kind of food sometime, but to choose that over and over and over again, day after day, and I see that great big truck in the alley and it blocks me sometimes. I can't get to the back of my store, that big Cisco truck where that Cisco food is what everybody's buying at every other place. Mm -hmm. I have a strong opinion about it because I think that's a mistake for people. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna stand there and like say mean things or nasty things mm -hmm. to people. I accept, I'm just going to do what I do, offer it and hope that it will attract by its it's a uh, good taste and it's value and it's, it's um, attractiveness. Mm -hmm. And I've seen all three of you buying at Farmer's Market. All three of you are good customers <coughs> at Farmer's Market and that's, yeah. been, that's been one small way that many people in the community have begun to say, we want to keep more of our dollars here and we want to be healthier and we want our small farms to survive 
So by gum, we're going to pitch in and help. So, and I think that's a, a significant aspect of small business development in the community. It really, you know, a question for me is how can we, you know, convince, not convince, but how can we edu continue to educate, though, the townspeople and the local people and the people mm -hmm. who work there the value of this? Yeah. Because I think they kind of believe it, but people have to live it as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's going to go back to, I mean, I'm looking around the room and I'm one of the few in here, because I know most of you, that was born, I was born in Marion County, but I've lived here all my life except for the four years that I went to college. Mm -hmm. And I dreamed of coming back here, but I didn't know if there would be an opportunity for me career-wise or not. I knew that someday I wanted to farm. Unfortunately, I, I didn't feel that I could just do that alone. I had to do something different. But when you're talking about people coming in from out of town, I can see the the side from our side mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. we are, you know, there's things, quiche. Yeah. Probably, for people's <laughs> friends have never it? had quiche, and I've seen it on your sign. <laughs> for alpacas, what in the At world are those crazy it. animals on Mac Four Road? <laughs> <laughs> so the nice thing about that is with the new small businesses, the people that are coming from out of town, you're able to offer something a little different. And then somebody goes, you know, he's making those alpacas and they're doing good. And I'm looking to diversify <laughs> from tobacco. Maybe I should go talk to this Sean Moy guy. He might know something that I don't. Mm -hmm. He's not from around here. He's tried something different. So that's where we mesh. And that's yeah. where I think Washington County, we're willing to accept anything. Yeah. As long as it's not being pushed. Yeah. 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 And yeah. when somebody sits back and goes, hey, that's, you know, that's working. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where everybody kind of mixes here, and I think it's yeah. very open and acceptable mm -hmm. to yeah. anybody yeah. that comes in this community. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good note on which to invite the audience to join the conversation. We would um, be very happy to hear from any of you with comments, observations, questions, additions. Um, well, I'd like to say something about um, the whole foods, organic foods, or just plain healthy foods. I do think it huge part of it is going to be education. I think um, Sister Claire's done a wonderful job with the farmer's market and getting mm -hmm. the word out. And, and there's a lot of other organizations outside, you know, uh, uh, Springfield that are talking about uh, the, co the real, the true cost of buying foods from Cisco and places like that. And it, it's, it's hard I mean, like, I embrace it now, but if you were to tell me that 10 years ago, I might have just, like, mm, yeah, not have been so excited about it. So I think it, it does take some time and some education, and people, you're going to get more and more people seeing the, uh, the reality of the, of the whole food system and appreciating uh, buying foods that are, are uh, grown or harvested closer to home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point, Laurie. Mm -hmm. Well, while you're thinking, I'll throw, I've, I've said a lot. I'm going to quit talking here in a second. But <laughs> when, when I'm on the, the board of directors of New Pioneers, and when I first got on, one of the things I, that I started to think about was what can, what can I do as one person to make a difference? And a few days I sat there at the office and I went, I really, I can't do anything. I'm just me. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, if I don't, and the next person don't, and the next person don't, then nobody will. Mm -hmm. And that kind of goes back to Farm Bureau. Um, we're a grassroots organization, not the, not, not the insurance side, the federation side of Farm Bureau, which is there to lobby on behalf of agriculture in Frankfurt. Uh, and Washington DC but just yesterday we had our resolutions committee meeting and at our local office and every year we send in a list of resolutions to the state office and um, we've talked about the Kentucky Proud and depending on who you talk to this strikes nerves a little bit but with Kentucky Proud labeling it doesn't necessarily have to be grown in Kentucky mm -hmm. and that's a misconception that I might be undercovering here on TV that might get me in trouble, and if it does, oh well. But 
we have seen in a resolution locally that we feel that that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what's Washington County's board of directors? How are we going to do anything? Well, if that gets adopted by our state and goes in our policy booklet, and then comes the next legislative session, and they go, okay, what's Farm Bureau think about this? Well, there's 400,000 members of Farm Bureau, and Farm Bureau says, and everybody doesn't agree with everything in that book, but Farm Bureau says we support Kentucky Proud being all locally grown and locally produced. Mm -hmm. And that's where it starts with one, and then multiplies, and then multiplies. And I think that's something with local businesses. Yeah, I've only got two employees, but like I said earlier, if you take 15 local businesses out and they all have two employees, plus the owner, there's 45 people out of jobs. So that's, when we get back onto the small business thing, I think that's the importance of it that has to be realized in, in a sustainable community. Yeah, I, I have something to read that speaks to that. This is, this is a paragraph from Wendell Berry also. He says, uh, we must do everything possible to provide to ordinary citizens the opportunity to own a small, usable share of the country. In that way, we will put local capital to work locally, not to exploit and destroy the land, but to use it well. This is not work just for the privileged, the well-positioned, the wealthy, and the powerful. It is work for everybody. Then he says, I acknowledge that to advocate such reforms is to advocate a kind of secession, not a secession of armed violence, but a quiet secession by which people find the practical means and the strength of spirit to remove themselves from an economy that is exploiting them and destroying their homeland. The great, greedy, indifferent national and international economy is killing rural America, just as it is killing American cities. It is killing our country. He can be very dark sometimes. <laughs> Experience has shown that there is no use in appealing to this economy for mercy toward the earth or toward any human community. All true patriots must find ways of opposing it. I love that sentence because to me, you know, there's a lot of talk about what is a patriot. Mm -hmm. And even today, with today being the anniversary of 9-11, it reminded me a lot of the pa patriot people running around and, I don't know, buying a lot of flags or whatever after things happened. But um, really, you know, I, I like that no notion, all true patriots. What could a patriot do? What better could a patriot do? But, and it, it made me think, yeah, maybe that's what I'm doing. That's my own quiet, one-person rebellion, is to find a way to oppose this massive capitalistic monster that is consuming. I'm not against all capitalism. I'm not against all industry. I'm not against all business, you know. <laughs> I just... There is a huge, massive machine that could and might, you know, destroy the earth and families and people, and it's really scary. And to stand up against it by, by you know, doing one small thing is really precious and valuable, and I, I mean, I think it's very spiritual, too. So I just think all true patriots must find a way to oppose it. That's pretty cool.